want to talk today from the subject, believe him for his word. Believe him for his word is our subject on today. And we all know that words are very important. Words are very powerful. Amen. And, and, and they can have a, a positive effect. They can have a negative effect. But words are so very important. And <clears throat> down through the line of time, I have been told that uh, think before you speak. Because once the word goes out, you cannot take it back. You can apologize and say, I'm sorry, or you won't, but the word had already went out. And when the word goes out, it can have a negative impact or it can have a positive impact. So, but it's going to be up to us on what impact that word will have. So we have to be careful at the word that we speak. We're going to the book of St. John, chapter number 4, beginning with verse number 6. This is a familiar story that we all have uh, heard and some may have preached it, and, but it's a very familiar script about the woman at the well that was talking to Jesus. So in St. John chapter 4, beginning with verse number 6, and I'm going to read verse 6 through 30. <clears throat> now Jacob Well was there. Jesus therefore, being weary with his journey, set thus on the well, and it's about the sixth hour, I read from the King James Version. There comes the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For the disciples were gone and went into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou be a Jew, that should drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered, said unto her, If thou do with the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink. Thou would have asked, him, asked of him, and he would have given thee the living water. One said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep, from whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave with us the well, and drink thereof himself, and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come in hither to drink, to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said unto him, The woman answered, and said, I have no husband. She said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband, and that thou said the truth. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Have father worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship you not, you worship you not, you know not what. For we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such as to worship him. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I am that speak unto thee, am he. I that I speak, I that speak unto thee, unto thee, am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What speak of thy, or why talk of thy with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come and see a man. Which told me all things that ever I did, and not this to Christ. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. 
Believe him for his word is our subject. And we know the story about the woman, and, and, and it was intriguing to me that when he asked her for a drink, she said, how is it that you, being a Jew, me being a Samaritan, you get me for water? But we didn't know we did it with one another. What had happened back in, 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 the, in, 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 in the olden times, the Gentiles and the Samaritan had hooked up together, and some of them married them. They married each other, you know, and so the Samaritan didn't like that at all. The Gentile was mixed in with them. So therefore, that's why they would have no dealing with, with, with the Jews. And so, but I looked at it and I said, now, why would she say that they, how did she know that he was a Jew? And back then, the way they dressed, the way they dressed identified their religion. And just like, just like today. Uh, now you see uh, men walking around, they got the turban around their head, you know that they're not out the Pentecost of faith. Um, we, we know that because of the way they dress. And you see how the, the Muslim dress, and we know that they're not out the Pentecost of faith. So the dress identified their religion. But we that are out the Pentecost of faith, or the holiest faith, we dress in your way. So you really you don't know who, who saved the way if you're going by the dress. Yeah. Uh, amen. So, but they dress according to their religion back then. And just like, you know, some schools now, that they, they have uniform, kids have to wear a uniform. So they identify with that certain school because they have uniform. Some schools that's in the ghetto, come just how you want to dress. So, you know, it don't matter. But their dress back then identified their religion, so therefore she knew that he was a Jew. So, by knowing that, and she was like, why are you talking to me? You know we're going to do one another. Uh, amen. But the, 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 the thing that really blessed me in all this here was, I read the footnote, and it says, some of the men came and they heard what Jesus had to say. And they said to the woman, we didn't come because of what you said. We believe him because of what we heard him say. So we know that he is the Christ. So you believe him for his word. Now, let's say Elder Kenny go to a five-star restaurant, and the name of the restaurant is Bo Peep, whatever you know, and the food is really good, and he come in, he's a pastor, man, you, you, you and mom, y'all need to go to this restaurant. The food is good. I mean, you get plenty of it. it, it it's reasonable. They, you know, the, the, the service is good. Y'all need to go and check out Bo Peep. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to go check out old people. Why? Because he said it. I didn't, haven't been there. Don't know what it tastes like. But he said it was good. So I'm taking him at his word. So we go and it's just like he said that it is. So what are we going to do? We're going to tell somebody else. You need to go check out old people. Why? Because see, your word should be your bond. You should say things, you know, if you're not, if you're not going to mean what you say, then you don't need to be saying it. But so often we say things that we don't really mean to say, then we try to take it back. Words can have an impact in situations and whatnot. Uh, amen. You, you, you can say some stuff, you know, and you can apologize. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I, I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it to say, you know. Uh, if you don't believe it, ask about the cook from Philadelphia Eagles. Went to the club, went to this concert, and he was drunk, and and talking about he whooped, I whooped all the years up in here. <laughs> well, now, still don't think about it. All the black folk wasn't, wasn't, wasn't bothering you. You had an issue with one person. Now, you're going to go around and, and whoop all the black folk? I don't think so. <laughs> so then he apologized and went away for uh, uh, counseling and come back. And then before the season started, him and his own teammate got into it. You got to have practice and they got into it. Folks said, well, he wasn't because of what he said. Oh, come on, we ain't crazy. Oh, amen. So words have impact. Words can influence. Word can hurt. Word can also heal. Word can build you up. Now we all know Lady Paints in the hospital got two, like going everywhere, you know, and and you know, and, and, and you know, she 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 always concerned about how she looks and everything, you know, and so I walked in yesterday, they walked in to get tubes going there work, you know. I said, hey, sexy mama. She's well, all right now. <laughs> so, you know, so 
we're, you know, I want to inspire her to let her know, you know, I don't care how everything's all hooked up. You still mine. You still look good to me. Okay, I ain't looking at anybody else, but you, you all right with me. So, in situations like that, you know, it's good to say an encouraging word, you know, to help build. Not to say that she was down, but, you know, it's just good to encourage one another through words. And I'm just about finishing. We're going on. And in St. St. Matthews, you can turn that if you want to, chapter 8, verse number 16. And it's talking about, you know, believing for his word. And that rich man, when the, when the men said that we, we ain't come because of you, what you say, we came, we believe in him because of his word. It's what he said that, 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 that convinced us that this is the Christ. Uh, amen. So St. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 16 said, When evening was come, he brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit, watch now, with his word, and he had all that were sick. They believed him for his word, and they were healed. Matthew 4 and 12 said, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword, pierced even to the divine center of soul and spirit, and after power, and after John, John and Myra, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Talking about the word. Psalms 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word is a deliverer and a healer. St. Matthew uh, 8. The centurion ancient said unto him, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, that's faith. That's taking God at his word. Everything that this Samaritan done, the centurion done, heard something about Jesus that convinced him that if he could just speak the word. And Jesus said unto him, to send, uh, to, to send, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And he said, was healed in the self same hour. Now, this centurion had traveled more than a day's journey to get to where Jesus was at. But he heard the word of God. Yes. And it convinced him that, hey, I mean, this man is awesome. His word is powerful. His word is everything. His, I mean, his word can heal, deliver, set free, and everything. So he said, now, God, I ain't where you coming under my roof. But he, you just speak the word. Yeah. And it'll be done. And the Bible said that he left and went on his journey. And as he was coming home, his servant ran to meet him. They said, oh, uh, your, your, your servant, the, 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 he, he's well, man. He, he, he's ill. So he said, well, well what hour was it when, when the fever broke? And they told him. And it was the same hour that Jesus said, go thy way. That convinced the centurion even, even the more. Like, hey, he spoke it. He did it. It's done. Can't nobody make me doubt him now, but I know what he can do. St. Luke 4 and 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirit, and they came out. Talk about taking at his word. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. But the word that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. Saints, we need to just take God at his word. Yeah. If we do that, everything will be all right. Mr. Tina was, 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 was praising God and, and she's talking about, you know, we, we need to speak the word, we need to live the word, we need to, you know, be what the word said we can be. And that's so true because if we believe this word, yeah. trust in it, and speak it, we can be what the word says that we can be. Yes. We can have what it says that we can have. Yes. We can do what it says that we can do. Yes. We just need to believe God for yes, His Lord. word. And when we do that, thing will fall in place. Yes. And then the Pam was talking about, you know, He's everything. Yes. No matter what your situation is, yes. God is still everything. Yes. No matter what you are going through and what it will come up in your life, 
God is still everything. Yes. When the devil is trying to throw everything at you, he's saying all of this, he's doing all this, God is saying, I'm still the deliverer. Yes. God said, you still have the victory. Yes. No matter what the devil does, what he said, you have the victory because I say it so. Yes. No, it's in the word of God. Yes. The battle is his. Yes. But he said, the victory is yours. Why? Because we believe him for what he is word. Yes. Stand on the word of God. Uh, amen. We just, like that. We, just, we just can't, you know, uh, 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 express that enough. It's something about the word. When you speak it and you believe, you hear it, you speak it and you believe it. And then you start applying it to your situation. And God will come through. Amen. Uh, with my wife, I, I pray. I said, Lord, I said, now, the doctor said that she's going to be in a whole lot of pain after the uh, operation and everything, you know. I said, but God, you're the great physician. Did she want to get her epiderm? She, first she thought about it. She said, mm, no, nah, I don't want the epiderm, you know. And so, but they gave her morphine where she can do her own, uh, her own pain medicine. And I asked her, well, how you feel? She said, I feel fine. I, said, I feel okay. Better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how's the pain? She said, the pain is just okay. So whenever she gave her pain, she just pushed the button, you know. And, and it's not as bad as the doctor you may like it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we pray. Uh, uh, and, and believe God that everything was going to be all right. Yeah. And the doctor called me that night about 740 and said she went through fine. Everything is good. Get everything repaired. And she is fine. I said, well, praise God. Because we believe God for his word. Saint, I want to encourage you to take the word of God. Speak it. Believe it. Receive it. Uh, and live it. And God will do in us what he wants to do. You know, it's why. Because we are taking him at his word. And we trust him and believe it in him. No matter what is going on, just believe God for his word. Yes. Uh, you know, they have this commercial about, um, uh, I can't think of the name of this place now. Um, uh, my mind. It, 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 it's, it's a, a, a company they, they, they travel, they, they deliver supplies to your, to your business or whatever you know and, um, and one of the slogans is, you can't go wrong when you buy it right <laughs> but I can't remember the name of the uh, something, something uh, I don't think, anyway, you know what I'm talking about anyway, tell you, you can't go wrong when you buy it right and my slogan is you can't go wrong when you do right you can't go wrong when you do right. Yeah. So if we do right, we ain't going wrong. So we thank God for the word. We pray that something was said. They mean that will encourage you and that they will bless you. That we take this word and apply it to our life each and every day. Speak the word over your children, over you, and over your, uh, your finances and everything. And let God do what God wants to do. You know, he wants to bless us. Yeah. Psalm 16 and 19 said, He loaded us daily with benefits. Why are we going without? We have everything we need. And why are we going without? Because we're not believing Him for His word. But starting today, we're going to believe Him for His word. And whatever He says, that is the final authority. Because the word is the final authority in our life. Amen. And we believe that we can change our life through the power He made available to us through. His word.